April looms and an explosion of flowers is just around the corner. Woody plants are already blooming and bees are on the hunt for nectar and pollen. Honey bees, once so common that nearly every flower contained one, have been disappearing in the past decade or so. As a wildlife photographer and entomologist, I've been dismayed to see this. The once common sightings of honeybee swarms, wild hives in trees, and common observance on flowers have given way to fields nearly empty of these once abundant insects. Bumblebees and other wild pollinators have remained somewhat consistent, but the news wasn't so good for honeybees. Anyway, in recent days I've been happy to find a much bigger population of working honeybees on this year's first flowering plants. So we'll take a look at their early work and how they gather nectar and pollen. It's a beautiful thing to watch and hear as the spring air is filled with humming bees. When temperatures are warm, the bees are active. Worker bees visit as many as 100 flowers on each flight before returning their loads to the hive. As they drink sweet flower nectar, their hairy bodies accumulate pollen dust the male gametes needed to reproduce fruit. The bee moves from flower to flower, transferring pollen efficiently between plants. Extra pollen is combed into special baskets on the bee's hind legs and packed into colorful nuggets later used to make bee bread for honeybee larvae. They carry this back to the hive. Bees with bare hind legs have just returned to the flowers to work. But those who have gathered for some time carry noticeable loads, sometimes adding up to 35% of the bees' weight. It's good to see more honeybees back this spring, for whatever reason. All of nature benefits from these pollinators. I'm Mike Blair in the Kansas Outdoors.